Hello everyone and welcome to the Robin Sealark channel. Today I am going to be working out of this book that I got from a thrift store to pull pieces, masterworks, and we're gonna do some 10 minute versions of them. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment if you want, and uh, enjoy. If you want to join along with me, feel free to. For this, I'll work with acrylics and I'm using mixed media paper. This is my pad. I cut all of these into four by six inch sheets. I love doing shorter studies. It feels like a way to loosen up, get your hands and your brain going. I had my mom mark a bunch of places with different artists who were her favorite or images she liked. We'll see what we can get up to in this. <laughs> Okay, we have an image from Mary Cassatt. I'm assuming out of the markers that this is the one that my mom marked because I know she likes that painter. This is a really common setup for me. I've got our three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and then black and white for some tinting and shading so we can darken or lighten colors. I'm gonna set a timer. I have my paintbrushes, I've got my water. 10 minutes, oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. This looks like it kind of has a peachy wash to it. I'm gonna start out with that, but I muted it back with some black. Let's get a background color. And I wanna use a bigger brush. I right, tape brushing down. I think it's kind of fun either taping off your edges or having a clean edge so that you can have a little white border. I literally only have eight minutes left and I have this background color on here. Let's make some negative space. Let's make some green to go around her body. Go around the head and the shoulder. It's got this diagonal. I wanna pay attention to the most important features of the composition. What's great about these short timed exercises is that it really forces you to prioritize what would be strategic. How can I make this look at all like a, a master's work? A light blue dress on, the hands meeting in the middle, the direction of her legs and the fabric. Let's get a little bit of definition by making some hair now. I am about halfway through with my time. Put some flowers in here. Three minutes? Oh my goodness. She's got more shadow behind her in the background. The impressionist period, capture her fast moving outdoorsy markations. Well, that is 10 minutes. <laughs> it's not so bad. I mean, it's not the greatest thing, but we definitely got an impression down. Cool, that's what our first one looks like. Thank you. Next, this is a uh, Paul Cezanne. Cezanne. This will be a little bit easier because I work on landscapes more frequently. Start your engines. This is kind of a nice color. This is just leftovers from the last one. But you can see this is like, it's flat, the colors. They're kind of more muted and sagey. So I kind of like toning my background to set the stage for what will be built on top of it. And we're gonna block in a mountain. Let's define some shadows, hills, here, lines of fields and houses, shrubbery. There's a lot of orange colors, so I'm gonna pull those in next. Ugh, this is reminding me of the season. I just did a road trip upstate New York. All of the trees are just starting to turn a little bit red. So we got these beautiful early fall scenes. Ooh, we've got five minutes left. Light source seems to be coming from this direction, casting the shadows back. Further things go back, the smaller they are. So we've got to keep in mind a little bit of perspective making with our mark making. Okay, got some yellow lighting up the side of this face. My camera battery died right as this one finished, but this one actually came out pretty decent in terms of the colors and things. 
I'm happy with it. Okay, <laughs> my mom did not choose this one, but I actually want to paint it just because it's an interesting story. Have you ever heard about Duchamp's toilet? So this is The Fountain by Marcel Duchamp. I'm gonna read it. This work is a replica of a porcelain urinal, which was originally purchased by the artist in 1917 from a plumbing supply firm in New York. Duchamp simply signed the object with the pseudonym R. Mutt, then entered it for an art exhibition. The bizarre item exemplifies the notion of taking a commonplace object out of its customary settings and placing it in a new and unfamiliar one. It was through this work that Duchamp first defined the concept of the ready-made or found object. In defending the original sculpture in 1917, Duchamp challenged traditional preconceptions of what art is. He stated that it was not important whether or not Mr. Mutt had made the work with his own hands. What mattered was that he had chosen it. Therefore, the creation was not important, but the idea and selection was. Hecka. We've got a toilet. If people had questions about whether this was art, I imagine they're gonna have even bigger questions about whether this is. Let's do it. Start. Let's get black, red, yellow. Let's get some negative space defined, shall we? Yeah. Maybe this will work out. <laughs> the shadow of the vase. Let's try to get some rose colors on here, shall we? In my book that is coming out, I mentioned it is nice to have a little cross-contamination on your palette with your colors sometimes to even out what the hues are that you're working with and get everything to blend in a similar color family. So I like a little bit of messiness. Some controlled messiness can be really good. Let's try some pinks. Grab some of our red. It's kind of nice. You can paint a flower, define the edges with the background, go back into the flower. Only a minute and a half, ah! Okay, hey, that's not so bad. Okay, I'm still working on this, sorry. I'm cheating, I'm cheating. Done, thanks mom. Next, oh, go again. That's beautiful, I'm excited to do that one. Ready for this 10 minutes. Got this orangey tone. Just a little bit more this way than I painted her head. Struggling. The clock is too fast on this one. <laughs> it was like the most beautiful painting to reference off of. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh, what have I done? 10 minutes, dang it. If there was bound to be one that was gonna be really problematic, maybe this will be my one. Sorry, go again. I didn't do you justice. You've defeated me. Ooh, we got some Van Gogh. Started. If you saw my bad assumptions about our video, that's where I went to Europe and I went to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and fell in love with Van Gogh. One of my assumptions was I didn't like him, but I realized I do like him after I visited his work in person. So this will be fun to do a Van Gogh's sunflowers. One in the middle, one right here, one right here. We have the countertop and then we can make a green color to use for our stems. Van Gogh did some really cool colors in his creases. Kind of noticing that here, he's got a little bit of outlining added to this in order to give it definition, but he's not using a black outline. He's got a deep blue. It's nice to do studies of painters and then get an idea for how they approached color. Even if you don't realize that you're getting an idea of it, by doing studies of other people's work, you just forces you to work a little differently than you normally would. Hmm. Aw oh, man, can I keep going? This one came out way better than the last one. Beep, 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 beep. Nice. I think I am going to skip over right here so we can work on a Matisse. Ooh. I'm scared of this one, I just realized. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be hard. We got the table. She's got the fruit bowl. 
Now let's make some chairs. 10 minutes is, you know, really fast on some of these. I'm not gonna lie. Oh gosh. Faces, you know, when you gotta go fast with faces, that's always a scary thing. Gorgeous. <laughs> Very different than the color palette of my other stuff I've been making. Okay, of course my mom picked a Claude Monet. Here we go. I'm going to make a green background. I'm gonna tone it a little bit with some red. I've got like a dark shadow that kind of goes through the center of the composition. Reeds in the sides, and then the water seems to recede into spaces and layers. I think I'm gonna use that same color purple while it's on my brush to just get some of the water lilies into our image. Oh my goodness, where does the time go? We only have three minutes left? You just wanna capture impressions of things. Dot these flowers, only have a couple seconds left. Oh my gosh, my time management was not good on that one. Oh boy. Time's up. I think it's a beautiful painting. The original. Ooh. It is Dante Gabriel Rossetti is the artist. I don't think you're ready for this. Let's start. Oh, that green is so regal looking, isn't it? It's like a beautiful emerald. This piece is called The Daydream. Wonder what they're daydreaming about. Love. Is it love? Do daydreamers only dream of love? What do you daydream about? It's actually so creepy. Oh no, <laughs> what have I done? How am I gonna salvage this in three and a half minutes? You know, I guess that's why it's a challenge and it teaches you to not strive so hard for perfection. What to dream about, daydreamer? I wanna keep going on all of these. 10 minutes is just too short. Wow, impressions of a daydreamer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I think we gotta do the Grant Wood American Gothic. It's beautiful. It's like, it's beautiful. Who are these people? Oh, actually it gives us some information. Let's read it. Wood was captivated by a simple Gothic style cottage he saw in a small town in Southern Iowa and created this picture around the image which it evoked in his mind. He used his sister and his dentist as models for the couple standing in front of the plain white house. Wood was accused of satirizing Midwestern values, but he insisted that he made the work as a homage to the down to earth Puritan dignity found in small town America. Wood was one of the exponents of regionalism, a form of realism based on the desire that American artists should end their cultural dependence on Europe by finding information in their local surroundings. His style was derived from the Gothic and early Renaissance masters Wood studied in Europe in the 1920s. Wow, what a masterwork. The American Gothic. I definitely lost some of my color accuracy reflection, but I did get some of the structure down a little bit better than some of the other paintings that I made. Oh my goodness, we made 10 of these. We actually have some kind of nice looking ones. I'm surprised that I like them a little bit in the aftermath. Some of them, uh, you know, not so much. Um, yeah, but there's a variety of, of good, better, best, worst. This one is one of my favorites, I'd have to say. Do you guys have any that you like? Are there any that I might be surprised to know that you like? If you try this at home, I'd love to know about it. You can find me on Instagram at Robin Sealark and tag me. I'm curious to know what you guys thought about this as an experiment and how you think I did. Was it pathetic? Was I embarrassing? Should I pack it up? Get out of here? Go home? I had a nice time. I hope you guys had a nice time too. I will see you in next week's video. Make sure you are subscribed. Have a wonderful week ahead of you. Goodbye.